Happy Thursday, everybody. Andy and Steve from wagertalk.com. Welcome to the Road to Millions. It is Team Total Thursday. We're going to go over team totals. We're going to go over a couple of Thursday night plays. Uh, we're going to go over some NHL and NBA props to take a look at. Light, light slate of NBA games, only two. We got a couple looks, and we'll go over the sleeper of the day and the stat of the day. I need some positive vibes, Steve. Uh, do you want to just uh, let's 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 talk let's talk Malcolm Brogdon, and then let's get some positive vibes going. How disappointed were you as disappointed as me? <laughs> Yeah, man, it was very, very frustrating to see him go down with an injury after five minutes with, with a he already had an assist under his belt, and then we watched, uh, we watched Skylar Mays basically, just assist after assist in his place. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it was a very frustrating uh, situation last night, and I, I, Brogdon was such a great look, and I felt like it was something that we could have looked towards in the future too. But now with the injury, it really, really muddies the waters on that one, obviously. Like he couldn't have done it in the fourth quarter when he was over his total because he was he was flying he was gonna fly over his total the game was just <clears throat> up and down so um, yeah we had a lot of options to play last night and we happened to pick the guy that gets hurt that has been the story of the last month so but let's take a look at some positive vibes from everybody uh, Russell says such a great show wish I caught it live no worries don't have to catch it live in fact we don't even. We record it and then we <laughs> upload it. So yeah, it's 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 technically not a live show. We upload it right after we record it. But uh, um, yeah, lost on the Flyers yesterday, Nick. Yeah, that was a bummer. Um, love your Hall of Fame segments. We are not getting rid of the Hall of Fame segments. Those are those will be here for a while. Uh, David wants us to look at the seventy-one Orioles four twenty win four twenty game winning pitchers. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good uh, one. Yeah, Rich was talking about Nylander being on the power play with uh, Austin Matthews. Scares me off taking under. He scored last night, Steve. We, we we laid off of him last night, but it's set up for Friday and Saturday. It absolutely is. Um, uh, E-Train, I'm 100% using the Jordan troll. Kobe never took two years off. It's, ex- <laughs> it's, it's exactly right. Anytime a Jordan true. fan bitches about load management, just bring up the two-year load management. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, tailed the Oshi play. It they scored three goals, but he did not get a point. That is one I'm going to keep writing. It was I, great I, cash. Yeah, as long as, now they're going to lower the. They're going to start juicing it. It it was minus one thirty last night. I would say it's got to be minus. 150, 160 next game. So um, yeah, so, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, Dean uh, wants us to look at a sack prop for the Seahawks against Sam Howell. Yeah, Sam Howell gets sacked four times like every game. So, yes, we will absolutely uh, look at that one. Tailing Porzingis, bang, Steve, great call. We were both on that one. Took him a while, but he gets there, right? Yeah, he missed those first two early on, and I was like, oh, man, I hope that doesn't, you know, it's something sometimes carries over. He's a little hesitant to pull the trigger, but uh, they look towards him. You know, they were trailing in late in the fourth, so they looked towards him and he hit a couple there. They almost yeah. came back in that one. It was They really made a great effort to come back in that one. The last second three could have tied it up and they would have potentially won it in overtime. Yeah, so uh, Fender uh, Weekly Bankroll Update. We'll do it again Monday. We'll explain tomorrow what uh, what's going on. So, so positive vibes. It's a new day. Uh, we got lots of opportunities coming up for this weekend. But, Steve, let's do it, man. Team, Team totals. totals. Team totals. Um, I can't hear that music very good. There we go. Um, down, yeah. uh, I'm looking at my Steelers. My Steelers. The Steelers over 19 and a half. <laughs> and we'll talk about the Giants. I'm taking them under 10 and a half. <laughs> I considered it. I considered it. <laughs> You're going the Ravens over 19 and a half and the Jaguars under 20 and a half. So let's start with our favorite overs. I, I think this is the Steelers. I think it's just more of I'm kind of I, I planted my flag that I said the Steelers offense is going to be better when Deontay Johnson gets there. And they they have the last three games. They scored 24 against the Rams, 10 against the Jaguars and 20 against the Titans. The Jaguars are actually eighth best in points allowed. So, you know, they're not a Steelers aren't a great offense, but Jaguars pretty good defense allowing points. So the Packers, they held the Rams to three points, but that was the backup quarterback. Before that, 24 to the Vikings, 19 to a bad Broncos team, 17 to a bad Raiders team, 34 to the Lions. I kind of like the Steelers team. They lucked, let's be honest, they lucked out a bunch of wins to start the season. 
and now they're getting healthier. They're getting a little bit better. I think their offense keeps getting better. They got their running game going last week. So I just I think the Steelers team is kind of just getting a little bit better. So I'm going to take them over 19 and a half against the Packers. Uh, Steve, you're going over the Ravens 19 and a half. Yeah, this is a nice low number for the Ravens. We only, you know, 20 points isn't a lot to ask for. They've done it in seven of nine games. Even in games they fell short, 19 and 10. So just right there with the 19 and the other games. That includes 28 against the Browns when they faced them in early October. The Browns defense is coming off a shutout against, but it was against the Cardinals. And if you look at it in the on the road this year, they've allowed 24, 38, and 28. Uh, I know the Browns' defense is legit, but 20 isn't too much to ask for for the Ravens uh, at home in this one. Give me the over. Yeah, Ravens over, Steelers over. I'm, I'm, I can't believe I'm taking under <laughs> 10 and a half on a professional football team, but they scored six points against the Raiders <laughs> last week, Steve. The Raiders. Yep. 10 against the Jets the week before. They have no quarterbacks. They have Matt Barkley and DeVito. And this is so setting up for a Dallas Cowboys ass whooping. Um, the Cowboys are front runners, and this is set up perfect them for them to win like 42 to nothing. This is just set up for them to dominate. Well, we can't beat the Eagles, but we'll stick it to the Giants. It just, it just feels like the Giants are walking into a buzzsaw. And I got to be honest. I, I, I don't know if there's a prop out there. I think the Giants, I think I would take the Giants to have the number one overall pick. I think they're going to get there. I'm not really sure, like the Bears are going to have. So you have the Panthers who are terrible, but their their pick goes to the Bears. The Bears and Justin mm-hmm. Fields, they want to win. I, they Like Justin Fields doesn't want, <laughs> doesn't want the Bears to have the number one pick. I don't think the coach does. And this Giants team, man, I think they're I think they're terrible. I think and I think they're going to continue to be terrible. So um, if I can find a prop on the Giants to have the number one overall pick, I might take it because I bet it's plus money. But for this game, give me the under. You're looking at the Jaguars under. We talked about how good their defense is. What do you like about uh, under 21 and a half for this team total? So kind of flying in the face of both trends on with these teams that you know the Niners have are on a losing streak. Jags on a winning streak. Both coming off of the bye. I'm looking at the this being a get right spot for the 49ers defense. They they they're they're healthy coming off the bye so they've had time to prepare for this. And Jaguars also also coming off the bye it could be a little bit clunky early on, maybe a little bit conservative as well. I just feel like the number is has a lot to do with it here. I I feel like 20 over, you know, scoring 22 plus against the Niners this week might be a lot to ask for. And uh, I think I take the under here and look for the 49ers to get right in this game. All right, there you go. Favorite over for me, Steelers, 19 and a half. Favorite under, Giants, under 10 and a half. Steve is going over the Ravens, 19 and a half, and under, Jaguars, 21 and a half. Uh, What do we have up, guys? Well, we have an NFL 5% play. We're still number one the last couple seasons. We've dropped our last couple 5% plays, but uh, we're still number one the last two seasons. So we took off last week. It's back, so we're going to get back on track with those. NCAA team total is up 8-2 and two this season, and tonight we have a cross-sport parlay. We're plus 43 units this year in those, so looking forward to cash those. Uh, it's an NBA-NHL combo. Uh, we're combined 19-13 and 13 in NBA and NHL, profitable in both. Really happy about that and still just completely irate that we took a loss last night when Brogdon got yeah. hurt, but whatever, whatever. So tough, promo. Tough one. <laughs> Promo code is still good. You want to use the promo code ALL30, A-L-L-3-0. It gets $50 off a 30-day pass. You can find that at wagertalk.com, H-T-T-P, colon, slash, slash, W-T dot buzz, slash, A-L. Take advantage of that promo code. Get you all sports and all percentages. Let's take a look at two NFL best bets. We're looking at quarterbacks in this one. Uh, I'm going Tyson Bajant under. Carolina gets run on. They don't allow a lot of passing yards. They only allow 178 yards passing per game. That's fifth best. I say fifth best. I think it's more because they're down and the team just kind of ends up running the ball on them. But Carolina allows 131.8 yards rushing. I think that's what the Bears do. I I think the Bears run it. And I don't see this being, you know, a complete, you know, 
ass whooping. Uh, like, so he has, you know, Bajan has 200 yards the last two games. And they, but they were behind in both those. We remember watching the Chargers. All of his passing yards was in the second half when they were down like multiple scores against the Saints. They were down from the very beginning. So I think this is a close game. I think the Bears run it. I don't think they let Bajent pass it a whole lot. And a Carolina team that you can run all over. I would also expect the clock to be running in this one. So uh, especially when the Bears get the ball. So I'm just, I don't think Bajent gets there, especially if they're ahead in this one. Uh, Steve, what do you like about Bryce Young? So this total seems really low to me. He's went under, I mean, sorry, he's went over this total in uh, five of his seven games this season. And even in the games he fell short, 31 and 32. So he's right on the edge of it, even in the games he falls short. I was riding the young young under his longest completion, and he burnt me two weeks ago. And then he went over again this week with a 40-yard pass. But it's still mostly uh, dink and dunk, a lot of short stuff. And that's how you're going to get at the Bears. It's going to be with the tight ends and the backs they're a top five run defense that just added Montez sweat. So they're going to be even, you know, more formidable up front. And the, the bears are also allowing uh, the eighth most pass attempts per game with 36.6 per game. Young has pretty much gotten there in every game and been right on the cusp in the other ones. So I'm expecting them to dink and dunk it a lot tonight, a lot of throwing. So give me the over on young tonight with, with plenty of confidence on this one. Yeah, let's take a look at these quarterbacks tonight. Catch on it. I, I, I gotta say, don't go crazy on betting this game tonight. This is, this is a bad football game. So don't go, don't go crazy on this one, right? It is a, it is a strange card tonight with the two NBA games, and then this game is a real, and especially you know Thursday, you throw in the variable of it being a Thursday night football game as well. I really do uh, like this pick as my best bet a lot, but I do agree that you might want to tread a little bit lightly tonight and save it for the weekend a little bit. Let's take a look at the sleeper of the day. What do you know? It's Bryce Young. Uh, and I happened to find a picture of him rushing. <laughs> there you go. That. So what do we like about him rushing? Yeah, so it's maybe a little counterintuitive for him to to go over for rushing and for his, and for his uh, pass attempts. But with this low of a number, I think he can get both done pretty easily. He's went over in five of seven games this year. We saw him have uh, 41 last week, which was his season high. He's had four and five carries the last two weeks. And the Bears defense, they've allowed five of nine quarterbacks to go over this total. And it's been the unathletic quarterbacks that have fallen short. Hoyer, Cousins, Carr. These are the guys that have fallen short. I'm expecting there to be lots of pass attempts for Young tonight. And I, the Bears have a leaky defense, a little undisciplined at points. Um, they, I think they rush him a little bit and he finds a little bit of green in front of him and gets the job done here again with at least 10 rushing yards. All right. Sleeper of the day, Bryce Young. Uh, so Steve is, 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 Steve is expecting a lot from Bryce Young. Uh, <laughs> throw the ball, I, run the ball. <laughs> I thought the same thing, but 10, 10 rushing yards and 33 pass attempts. It's is that much to ask for. It, it, it's one yeah, run, he can, so. he can get it done. All right, I did the stat of the day. The Edmonton Oilers give up 4.27 goals per game. San Jose Sharks give up 4.58 goals per game. Those two are the bottom two, and it's not even close in terms of goals allowed in the NHL. However, they're only scoring 2.64 goals per game. Edmonton is San Jose 1.17 goals per game. Steve, they play tonight, and the total is seven. What gives? <laughs> I, man, I, I don't know, because it, it's funny you have this as the stat of the day, because I, when I first saw the game, I see the Sharks, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe Oilers team total, you know, like over or something like that. Man, they, you can't trust either one of these teams right now. As, no. You know, the Sharks coming off their first win, but um, Oilers have so much talent, and we've we've ridden guy like uh, Drysidle has been a guy that we've ridden in the past and had a lot of fun with, but uh, – I, I, I'll lean towards it being a higher scoring game here with these two teams and going, it's a high total. I think it gets to seven at least, so you probably push or something like that. Yeah, Sharks broke the seal. They get a win. Granted, they only scored two goals, but, <laughs> you know, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> you know, you got to start somewhere on that one. So, all right, let's take a look at some NBA and some NHL props. Let's start here in the NHL. Uh, I mean, I'm going. I, I'm going back. I, I I said it about Nylander. I'm listen. I think I'm going to take him at a unit 
on Friday and Saturday. That's 16 games in a row. It's insane. I just don't think it continues. So um, if we're looking at streaks, uh, I mean, Maselli's getting there every single game, but it's kind of, it's, it's interesting. You know, he's on a hot streak and yet the, the over under minus 120, minus 110. So the books are not, you know, shading it, you know, to any, you know, to, en- to any one side. We got quite a few guys here uh, on seven and six and five. So we got quite a few people on streaks. Was there anything that stuck out to you in uh, NHL today? So for, for points, I, I kind of have a play that's similar to your Oshi play from yesterday. Uh, Anders Lee, under a half of a point he's um he's went under in his last it's, so it's juicy though it's negative 180 as you can see um but it could be a good part of lay piece or maybe just a small play on this because he's he's just not shooting a ton recently he's went under in his last seven games and nine of 11 on the season and then you got the bruins allowing the least goals uh so tonight should be a tough spot for them with his shots being way down if you look at the month of November, his shots are way down in all the games, re- the last three or four games. So I, I think a sprinkle on him not scoring a point tonight would be a, a solid look. Yeah, I, I mean, Islanders don't score a whole lot to begin with. I mean, they're, 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 what are they, 2.4 goals per game or something? They're not, you know, they're not putting up too much. Uh, I'm with you. There's a couple that I looked at. I looked at uh, Hayton for Arizona. Um, St. Louis, pretty decent goals allowed. They do allow a ton of shots on goal. He got his first point yesterday, uh, minus 105, minus 125 on the over-under. My favorite one to go under is uh, Ricard Raquel. Uh, They're playing the Kings. Kings don't allow very many goals. They don't allow very many shots. And here's the interesting thing. So, okay, he's got three points on the season. Two of them are against San Jose. I went back and looked. (laughs) I went back and looked. It was on the fifth and eighth goal they scored that game. So talk about, uh, like, garbage. Garbage and then, time, big time. Yeah, and then he gets one point against the Capitals, who suck. So he's put up three points against terrible teams. And it's a tough, tough matchup. Uh, Pittsburgh, I don't think they're very good. So it's minus 135. It's in the same neighborhood as Oshi yesterday. So, um I like these looks. I, 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 I think I like playing these to not have a point more than I like the, the ones to have a point. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying these, Steve. Me too, because you can find these teams that when they're, when they're facing off against a team that doesn't allow a lot of goals, you can find a lot of different holes in some of these unders. And just sometimes it's a lot easier to, to bet on a guy to not do something than to do something. Uh, in that same game with the Kings and the, and the Penguins, I considered more – I mentioned him yesterday going over two and a half shots on goal. He got there yesterday for me. Uh, and he's went over in five of six games and seven of 10 on the year. But uh, Pittsburgh's tough D. They're not allowing a ton of goals. So I'm not allowing a ton of shots. I should say I'm sorry. But so I it's I like the Andrews Lee look a lot better. I know it's really juicy, but it's my it's my top play for the NHL for today. Yeah, I mean, look at these guys. That, I mean, look at their, their percentage of games that they're getting goals in i mean it's there's a lot of these guys out there that you can play i mean you know minus 125 minus 125 my, you can find some really really good ones on not to have a point i know it's nerve-wracking i would recommend not watching the game i watched the capitals game last night and that was a mistake <laughs> every time oh she yeah. touched the puck you're like oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying these this year. I think I'm going to keep looking for some of these really good spots, see if we can grab a couple units here or there. So, Only two games, in, only two games in the NBA. Um, I, we'll start with Milwaukee and Indiana. I, listen, a total of 241.5. I did a video breaking down this game on, on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. I mean, it's overs all day. This team is like – both these teams are top six in – uh, pace of play, top 10 in offensive efficiency, and bottom six in defensive efficiency. I mean, it's just – it is just going to be – it should be a score fest. Giannis could have 50 points if he really wanted. Um, I don't know. He only played 22 minutes last night. They have him listed as playing right now. The weird thing about the Bucks, Steve, is that they just don't have very many assists. Last night against Detroit, they had 120 points and 19 assists. Detroit had 28 assists. They they just don't – I don't know why they don't, like, 
like pass the ball or get too many assists. Damian Lillard's total is five and a half tonight, and it's plus money, and he's gone over once. And I know there's going to be a lot of baskets in this one, but uh, I just – it, well, it actually moved to six and a half. Look at this. Moved to six and a half. So, yeah, if you can find six and a half, I would absolutely take the under on that. They, this Bucks team just does not uh, it does not create a lot of assists. So, that would be one that I would look at. Uh, what uh, what were you looking at tonight? This game, that game, I mean, I, obviously Halliburton was a potential look for assists, but it's like the number is just way too high at 11 and a half. I, everything would have to go right. I know it's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, my 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 mate my this I don't like this card very much. I know it's only two yeah. games, but but uh, my my favorite look honestly is in the other game. I, I'm I'm just looking at Capella. Whether it be it's not his rebounds and points are set at the same thing nine and a half for either one, and I, I like them both. They both they both cashed in uh, five of seven games this season. Um, no Wendell Carter Jr. on the Magic. It's going to open things up in the paint for him. So um, I don't see why they wouldn't you know, give it, give him some looks in the paint. I think the rebounding look, especially he's went over that one consistently. I think you could do a combo on it with the points and rebounds or play either category over nine and a half. I think he probably gets there on both. I, you know, I considered DeJounte Murray's assists. Um, Magic play some good defense though, and they're not allowing a ton of assists. Uh, so uh, it's Cabela for me in that game. Yeah. It's not a huge not a huge NBA slate, not a ton of games uh, to take advantage of. So, all right, guys, I think that's going to do it for us. A road to millions. We're having a good week. We're profitable. Uh, Should have been more after uh, with yesterday, but that's behind us. We move on. So um, good luck on all your plays. Don't forget to go grab your plays and uh, leave us a comment. Tell us what your favorite play is tonight. Hit the like button and use the promo code ALL30, A-L-L-3-0. It gets $50 off a three-day pass. Get you all plays for the next 30 days. All percentages, all sports. So good luck on all your plays. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. We'll have our big announcement. We'll see everyone tomorrow on the road to millions. Good luck. Good luck, guys.